Um, you can see in the list that we have here several co-authors, uh, Javier and Philippe, that probably you already know, and a group of people that are mainly from the group of uh, work at, at NOAA. Uh, um, Rick Lamkin, Gustavo Goni, Joaquin Trinanes, and Nathan Putman, and also the group of the engineering department in the, in the NOAA, who were the ones who developed the, uh, the instruments for, for the experiment. Okay, so we, we started to talk about this uh, a project to test what I didn't say, but you can see here the, the title, right? So we start talking about how we can uh, quantify or observe uh, the inertial effects uh, dynamics in, in, in the ocean, in objects floating in, in the ocean. At the time, we were working with a NOAA group on the problem of the Malaysian flight that was lost in the, in the accident in the Indian Ocean. So we were working with uh, drifters and we were calculating um, uh, the time and combining drifters um, all the way to the places where the debris was found, right? But the debris was different pieces, different um, uh, sizes. And so that, at that time, we would start saying, and uh, with Javier, we were working, and, uh, and Rick Lamby, we were working at that time with the inertial uh, maxi relay first adaptation. Uh, we say, okay, this probably should be a good uh, application, but we were already doing different kind of analysis. So at that time, we start talking with uh, Gustavo and Noah people about, okay, let's plan a, a dedicated experiment uh, to measure these um, inertial effects. Um, so that's how we started to talk about um, this problem. Of course, there are many other oceanographic problems. Uh, some of them were already mentioned by, by in Javier's talk, right? But in general, any uh, debris in the ocean, right? The, the garbage uh, patches, uh, search and rescue in general, and lately, uh, for many of us that work uh, things related to, with the Caribbean and in, in Florida, the sargassum uh, is getting a, a problem because of the amount it's getting all the way to the beach. So it's not that it's new, the sargassum, of course, but the, the fact that is the invasion in, the, uh, in several places is, is costing the cost for tourism and other uh, industries. Um, uh, especially like uh, Mexico and islands in the Caribbean is important. So that's something that we are starting to see at that. So, the, so we plan to do some dedicated experiments. I will show uh, all the experiments. We are planning more, uh, but I will show the results, especially of the first experiment. That is the one we already finished to uh, analyze. The original idea was to, uh, to use the, the theory that was already Handy at that time that was was uh, that lead by led by led by Javier uh, in 2016, right? And uh, um, the first adaptation that includes uh, the drag of the wind and and Coriolis influence uh, on floating material in the ocean. But as I, as I will show in a minute, it didn't work as we were expecting, right? So that motivated uh, further uh, improvement of, of, the, of, the, of the theory. And that's what Javier presented on the, uh, on the talk, uh, um, I think, Monday or Tuesday, right? So today, what I will present are uh, results that are already summarized in, in this paper that is, was recently accepted. Um, which is the comparison with the, with the first experiment. Okay, so these are the drifters. So we, uh, you will see uh, in my uh, comparisons that I will have uh, cubes, uh, boards, uh, spheres. They are all done by, um, I forgot the, um, the material is um, styrofoam and uh, with the GPS on the top and some little drag to be sure that the GPS do not end up on, on the water. Other kind were uh, these plastic plants and we, where we put also some um, little cones where to support the, 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 the GPS. So these were different shapes, sizes, and buoyancies. So the first intention was to put several of the same kind at the same time so we can compare that 
um, is it uh, just the variability of the velocity of the flow, the differences, or is it really the inertial effects, right? So, but the, in the um, in the first experiment, we were just trying to, to check how long these drifters will survive, right? But because they survive it and we have good data, we end up also using the, the first experiment. Okay, so these are the experiments. So we use uh, some opportunities. It's not that we go specifically where we go, right? Where we want. So the first experiment was right uh, um, close to Rasma, just all the way to the Gulf Stream, to the Florida current, but just, just uh, uh, very close to Rasma. The other experiment were in four different uh, locations in the North Atlantic that we took the opportunity for, for a cruise. And in that case, we do, we do um, I mean, I wasn't there. So they deployed several drifters uh, of the same kind in each location. And the um, last experiment we did was uh, in Puerto, between Puerto Rico and Republican, Dominican Republic. That the importance of that is uh, that we include in this uh, real sargassum. So we attach a, a, a GPS to some uh, sargassum mats as well uh, as the others. So that's are the. Uh, so in each of the points, we deploy several of them, right? Okay, so just to give you an idea, so some of the trajectories, we will not get much from this figure, but you can start guessing here, they are, uh, the kind of drifters are different colors. You can start seeing that they really have uh, differences in the trajectories uh, by the type. But of course, I will do further analysis. But you can start seeing some differences in the, in the in the trajectories. Okay, so this is just one example of one of the cases. So here we have the velocity of the drifter. I'm sorry, the time. This is a week. And again, several of the same kind. Uh, the colors indicate the same type. And you see that the velocity, they tend to group as, uh, as type. And if we do the same uh, of the four cases, you can see that this is something that we observe in, in the four uh, deployments that we have more of, of each kind uh, of drifters. So uh, a better way to, to see this is, actually I should mention that I will not present much of these results because they are not uh, finished yet and this is a work that uh, Philippe is, is, is doing. Um, so uh, a better way to see this, each of these panels correspond to each deployment. And uh, in each, for example, this is deployment one. Okay, sorry. That was the closest one, and then I will present results of this, this, and this, that going in that order. Um, in this particular deployment, we deploy, we have uh, 12 uh, drifters. So, and you have them organized as kind. So first you have the sargassum, then you have the board, then you have the fear, and then you have the cube. And the colors indicate uh, the normalized uh, distance by pair. So one thing that you can see in all the deployments is that they are in the diagonal. So the ones that were the same kind tend to be uh, as, uh, closer, right? So this was a distance after a week. Um, and you, you don't know anything about yet of the buoyancy of these different drifters, but they are organized in a sense that this has less uh, uh, area to the surface, to the air, all the way to here where they have much more area. So they organize kind of in the buoyancy, how far they are apart from the other kind of, of drifters. The lines in white, I will not talk much about that, but this is a clustering algorithm that Philippe is doing, so you can recognize from the algorithm the, the type of, 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 of drifter. So uh, with all this, we can, we can say that how they cluster by, by type that is suggesting that, of course, it, these effects must, uh, must be important, right? Uh, size, shape, or and buoyancy, right? At this point, uh, yes? Sorry? Yeah, sorry, I said that. Yeah, this is a week, it's time. One, one week. 
So yeah, sorry. Yeah, here here I have it. I cut it to have it larger, and I I cut it wrong. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Yeah. So this was just a week. The the drifters in the North Atlantic uh, lasted longer, but uh, I'm just presenting the first uh, week. Uh, the the last experiment was in Puerto Rico, uh, and I want to just emphasize in this case that we put real sargassum which are the ones in gold here. And again, even though, I mean, there are others that were not deployed in the same point, the ones that were deployed close together that were the um, artificial sargassum and the real sargassum, you can see that the greens follow one trajectory and the gold follows another one. So it's, 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 it's something that we will, uh, Nathan is analyzing and he will continue doing that, yeah. Yeah. Putman, yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> not you. <laughs> um, okay, so in this talk, I will focus on the first experiment, which is the, uh, the one close to Florida, uh, mainly because the velocity that I am using, which is a combination of um, Abiso, um, they uh, include the Ekman effect, and also they feed the drug uh, drifters that I are in the area, that is a product that uh, Rick Lamke has from NOAA, uh, was available and they, they, they get all the years, so we didn't have the, the other experiments ready when I started to work with this. And also because I expect to know better the, the Florida current than any other place on the middle of the, 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 the Atlantic, right? I expect to have uh, less errors in the velocity of the Gulf Stream than others. Less variability, let's say, no errors. Okay, so we have here the first uh, result, the, the first um, experiment. So we're starting with time, we have uh, a week. I have to stop in this in a week, and, and I did for the others, because uh, the cube, which is this, um, trajectory, the first one, uh, the GPS stop at that point. So I just want to have the same amount of time to analyze all the different parameters, right? So uh, in this figure, we have just the uh, trajectory in time for the sargassum, but uh, plastic sargassum mat, the board, the sphere, and the cube. And one thing that you will notice is that looks like they are going more or less together, even though you have some displacement here, right? But they change the trajectories after, and we have here a long track, the sonal wind velocity. You can see a change and an intensification of the wind at the time they have the, this change in, in, uh, in trajectory. So in this experiment, we just have one of each kind, right? So it's, it will be just a... So, I did point out that, pointed out that the, the, the change in trajectory were after a wind event, but I just want to mention also that the, this is the meridional velocity. So along the, uh, the Florida current, you can see between the different shapes, the cube is the one that is going faster even before the, the just the first day. Uh, the cube is the one going faster, and the plastic mat is the one that's going uh, uh, slower, and they have more or less a 10% of, of difference or more in the, in the velocity of, of, the, of, of the drifters, even before the wind, right? So that means that other things also are important, right? Okay, so what is the kind of data I will have for, for analyzing this? So I will be using, as I said a minute ago, uh, Abiso data to calculate um, geotrophy. It's a, it's a combination that includes uh, um, uh, the, Ekman the Ekman component, the velocity using wind, and also use the drug drifters in the area. So. Um, so we will have uh, also the, for the flow of the air, we will use the wind from era entering as well. And the drift that we have, I already mentioned several of them, but other things that are important, I mean, you, can, you, you saw the picture, so you have an idea of the size, but you have the sizes here. And also they were a different level of how deep they were. So the buoyancy was different between these, uh, uh, these drifters. 
Okay, so first thing we, we want to check is how, how far, um, well, of course we know that will be different than just the water, right? But how far these, uh, uh, the drifters are in comparison to just uh, uh, water particles. So using the, the combined uh, velocity data of the current, you can see here in dash, just a, a water particle, right? And you have here the trajectory for the cube, the sphere, the board, and the mat of sargassum. So in general, it's going just straight and much faster than the, than the sargassum that is the closest one. So one thing that is a, 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 a ad hoc way to, to include the, the wind, usually in oceanography, is to use this, what we call the, the leeway uh, model, right? So the, to the, um, velocity of the current, a percentage of the wind is added to a modified velocity, right? So, for example, when you work with people with the oil, they added like a 1% of uh, plus the, the current, right? And there are differences uh, ad hoc uh, numbers that they include as a windage. So just to to check that, we also put, uh, for comparison, 1%, 3%, and 5% that are the dash line. So the 1% is here, just using the leeway, the 3% and the 5%. So it is clearly that the wind will be doing something, but what I want to emphasize, so I don't want to finish my talk just here, say, okay, just add 1%, 5%, right? I, I, uh, this is our just a guessing number, right? How, how, what percentage of wind should I add, right? So it's an ad hoc, and I just put some numbers to, to compare. So, uh, but of course, you can see already some uh, uh, improvement there. Okay, so as I said, the original idea was to compare these trajectories with the model that. Uh, um, uh, Beron Vera et al. in 2016, uh, where the, um, the um, sphere was approximated by two spheres, one that is exposed to the air and the other one that was exposed to, to the flow, right? Um, I, I will present a summary of the Maxi Relay uh, equation in a minute, but originally it's supposed that the, the, the whole sphere is under the same flow, right? So here we have an interface, and as I, um, the last talk was mainly on this uh, model. Okay, oh, I saw I have the figure for the, okay, I changed the order. Okay, so just summarizing quickly because this was most of the material that Javier presented uh, the other day, but with the, the Maxi Reeler set, it will be a, a Newton's second law where we have the, the acceleration of the particle as uh, equal to the sum of, of forces. Forces that are included, and here notice that I just put a flow and particle, so I am not distinguished yet what is air of, flow, or, of, of water. I just want to present the, the equation, so the, the, force, uh, the flow force exerts over the, the, the particle. Uh, the added mass, so when the, the, the sphere is moving, the, 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 the fluid that gets along with the, with the, with the, with the sphere, uh, the lift, um, uh, which is, is due to the shear induced by rotation, uh, induced, uh, sorry, the shear induced rotation, and the drag force that we will see that uh, uh, it will be very important in the, uh, in the development of the leeway part that I will get to that in a couple of slides. Um, okay, so I think I have all that I want to say here. So, as I said, the first intention was to, to compare this with the 2016 model, and of course I was not very happy when I, when I saw these results, right? So, even though we have certain, uh, like the order is, is right, right? So, first the cube is the one that is starting to have some uh, going offshore, and then the sphere, the board, and then the, the, the sargassum, it is far from, from what I was uh, expecting to check the inertial effect with the, with, with the model. At that time, was I, we started thinking, so how we can get an improved model uh, that consider also, the, the, uh, as before, right, the, the, the air and the, and the water, but 
instead as an uh, approximate each of them for an sphere, how we can do just uh, the part that correspond to each other, right? So this is uh, the 2019 uh, model where instead of, uh, instead of dividing both into spheres, uh, it's an integrated, uh, um, integrated on the high, depending on which flow do you have th there. And this is what uh, was presented in that last talk, right? So a, an important parameter to remember here will be uh, delta. So delta will be the, the density of the water divided by the density of, of the particle. And so if we have a, a, a high number, means that the particle is, uh, the, the cube, for example, which is the one that has higher delta, is more uh, above the water than, than the others. Like the sargassum will have close to one, is almost all in water, but just some part above the water. So, um, so I guess I will mention the, the rest of the parameters as, as I am going, right? So um, we have the acceleration of the particle plus the Coriolis term, and we have the, the mean values of the other uh, uh, forces. You get the complete set, the maxi relay kind uh, equation for the acceleration of the uh, particle. So actually, we did solve, and I put here the slow, uh, the reduced version, but we were using both of, oh, I have an extra parenthesis there. Yeah. So we, we use both of them, because in this case, we do have the initial velocity, because we have data, we have the, uh, the drifter, we can calculate what is the initial velocity, so it's not a problem to use the complete set, right? The full set. But uh, we also use for, for, for other analysis the, the, the reduced version. So whenever, um, in some place you will see U here. U is a combined uh, velocity of the B is for the current and B A is for the wind. So it's, the, it's, it's a kind of leeway model that is the, the, the same kind of model that is commonly used in oceanography, but we will see that this uh, windage or the coefficient, the leeway coefficient, will be dependent of the buoyancy and another uh, factor length that I will define in a minute that are from the drag uh, force, that are coming from the drag force. So, um, so other parameters that we will have here is, uh, is the um, inertial time. So that will also depend uh, as uh, the buoyancy and the length, but also on the size of the, of the, of the drifter. So in this case, of the particle, right? In this case, A is the radius of the, of the sphere. Then we have another parameter here, which is K, that we'll, I will introduce in, in and a couple of slides that depends on, because we, don't, we have different shapes, that will be the coefficient to, uh, um, that they use for the drag force to get to the different uh, uh, shapes. Okay, so how do we get some of these um, uh, parameters? The, the, the one for the buoyancy is direct, but it's not direct how we will get the length of this uh, that, that are, well, here is where I'm doing this. Okay, so a little more details about the, the drag force. So here I have it in general for any flow. So you will have uh, CD here and the Reynolds number, right? But this is, a, this is for, for a sphere, right? So if you have the complete sphere under the water or in the air, this length will be just one, right? Because we will use the whole diameter as a scale for, for that. So the first thing that we did is say, okay, this length will be proportional to the, to, to the diameter, but what should be the value of Ka or K? So that is something that uh, um, we will fit with the data, but of course, this is something that needs to be done in a more proper way, right? So you need to do calculations to have 
the spherical cap under the flow and see what is the actual uh, CD for, for that specific shape, right? But for now, what we will do is we will have the, the KA and K as free parameters and we'll use that with the data we have. Okay, so I didn't put, I didn't write the, the whole expression before uh, for the uh, leeway factor or the inertial response time. We have it here and you will see um, um, gamma is a, it's a rate between the, the viscosity of the um, air and the, and the water and the other parameter, the other functions are, are function of, of the uh, flotability and they are zero when you have um, um, the sphere all the way down in the water and they increase to, uh, they tend to one or two or to two when they are all the way up in the air. So these are the two functions, C and, okay, I wrote it wrong, C and phi, that we have it here, right? So one first thing that we start noticing, so the leeway factor we expect to be, uh, um, um, when you have, the drifter has more exposure to the air, you expect to have this as, as a higher value, right? So one way to do that is we start, first of all, fixing both of them equal. So the proportion of the length of the, for used for the drag force will be equal to, in, in case of the water and, and the air, you will have that this will increase as delta increase, so the, the alpha will increase with, with the buoyancy. So that is something we would like to, right? So that is the first thing that we, we are, I will summarize in the next slide, but that's one of the things that we would like to have. The other thing is also that you expect to have this um, uh, faster uh, response when you have it also above uh, water. So one way to do that will be to have um, this case proportional to the, uh, to the, to the buoyancy, uh, inverse to the buoyancy, sorry. So this is an heuristic proposal and what we will do, we will uh, get the parameter R from, from the data. So we are proposing first that the case will be equal, so the, uh, the proportion of the lengths that we will be using for the drag force will be equal for the air and the water, and they will be uh, inverse proportion with the, with the inverse to the, uh, to the buoyancy. <clears throat> okay, so this is kind of a summary of what I just said. So if we do both equal, we guarantee that the, the alpha factor, the leeway factor will increase with, with delta, and the same thing will shorten the, the inertial response time if we also included <coughs> decay with, with, the, with the buoyancy. Um, so this is what I mentioned, that in case of, of being equal and, 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 and one, this is a case for the, when it's completely submerged. Okay, so just letting you know before I show the figures, the best fit end up being for, oh my, I find another error, R equal to approx three, so it will go with delta minus, to minus three there, but as I said, uh, this is just a heuristic proposal, uh, some numerical simulations, Philip is working with some uh, numerical uh, simulation to get a better estimation of, of um, of an spherical cap um, to include. Okay, so so this is the drag force average uh, explicitly when we have we have included what are the um, k dependency with the with the buoyancy. What I just want to point out uh, in this um, slide is the how the combination of the current and the wind is it's directly from the drag force. So you can, uh, this is what, <coughs> you, 
usually it's called the, the leeway, and many people use this ad hoc. Actually, it's not exactly the same, because usually you do not have the, uh, the one minus alpha in front of the current, just uh, adding something to the wind, but the kind of model that people use, but with ad hoc uh, coefficient, is coming directly from the um, averaging the, the drag force between the uh, air and, and, and wind, wind and current uh, uh, to the sphere. Um, so this is the, the fit for the, um, the, the R that we found uh, for the fitting the different drifters. So the first uh, dot here is the sargassum, the board, the sphere, and the, and the, um, the cube. And this is the best fit. And, and you have here uh, normalized, but what should be the value of the inertial time response if it, if it were all the way below water? And of course, in here, it shouldn't go to zero. It should go to the the um, value that it was, it's supposed to be when you have the complete sphere above water, uh, sorry, in the air, but it's a very small number in comparison to the other. In this case, because we have the, uh, the inverse relation here, of course, it goes to zero, right? Um, so, yeah, actually, in practice, any we were testing at the beginning any value bigger than one was working more or less well, but uh, the, the best fit was around three. Okay, some other considerations. So what is this? Uh, I didn't do any of the slow manifold here, but Javier was talking the other day and was saying that tau should be, the non-dimensional tau should be small to do that. Some consideration to do and to better and to justify further the, the, the use of this R is that uh, you end up having with um, the uh, inertial time response uh, in, in comparison with the scales of the, of the problem, uh, given much a, a, a small number, right? So to do the approximation. Probably I'm going really fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so. This is the leeway factor, and I just want to point out here the differences between um, the new solution, which is in, in, in red, in complete line, uh, and in the dash is the solution, uh, uh, 2016 solution. One thing that we were working mainly in the, um, uh, in the paper of 2015 was what the Androg uh, drifters, which actually has a, a, a delta value of, of two. So for that particular case, the values were close uh, because you have half of the drifter, uh, the fear of the drifter, of the SPP drifter below water and half above water, right? Uh, but in general, the, you can see that whenever you have uh, things uh, less than a half, uh, more than a half below water, the, the factor, uh, the new factor is much smaller and then increase faster uh, with the new uh, alpha dependency than the one in the 2016. Also, we compare with two other uh, uh, models that I think Javier mentioned already, was Ross and Nesterov. And in this case, the, the way they got the... Um, the leeway factor was uh, the cancellation of the, uh, the quadratic drag between water and, 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 and air, and the other was uh, empirical. So they are not far from this, the values that we are getting, but they have uh, some, some differences. So I will use those models as well to compare with the, with the, with the drifters. Okay, so other thing that I mentioned and uh, we will be using because we don't have all spheres. Uh, I should mention that we plan to do all spheres of different uh, sizes and, and buoyancies. Uh, that's the next experiment. Actually, it was the first one that we planned, but ended up being different. So at one point, we will do, the, hopefully this year, the, the Florida current, so close to this experiment, but all spheres, uh, 
uh, especially different buoyancy because of the results that we are getting, but we could also include uh, different sizes as well. But we want to start with all spheres first. So, but uh, because we do have different uh, shapes, uh, what I am including actually do not modify much uh, the drag in, 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 in the, um, for the cases that we have, but we are approximating, we are using K to multiply the, the drag um, force uh, where the different A's here are the best, um, the equivalent sphere for having the, the same volume, the same surface, or the normal uh, area, uh, uh, the, um, the best approximation to the normal area there, the, the sphere. Of course, uh, of course, there will, could be some differences because it's not that you will have the cube always go in this direction. You may end up with the rotation of it, right? So it's not. It's not a, a perfect uh, a way to do it. And this correction is only done um, for the drag force and not, not all the other uh, terms, right? So that's probably one more reason to do all sphere first, right? OK, so I think we have all the elements we want. So we will use, I, I put here the reduced version of the equation, of the, but we also use the, the, the full uh, maxi relay version, and we have the drifter parameter. So we have uh, where I put here A is the, is, the, is the one that is getting from the average of the best sphere approximated, right? Uh, surface, volume, or normal surface, right? So we have a sphere, cube, and the, and the plastic mat uh, with equivalent A's. The K, of course, for the field is, is just one, and different for the others. And the buoyancy uh, parameter, where we have the biggest, the one is the cube, and then we have uh, the sphere, the, the board, and, and last, uh, the mat. And what kind of value we are getting, uh, most importantly, is the alpha factor that is around 3% for, um, uh, for the sphere, 4% for the cube, and a little less for the board, and, 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 and a smaller than one for the, uh, for the mat. So if you remember one of my first figures, just to put as example, I put 1%, 3%, or 5%. So they are not far from those values. That's why we have some kind of uh, a, a, a match, even though we were just guessing the number, right? In this case, we are getting them uh, from first principles, right? Uh, values for the um, for the uh, inertial time response are uh, very small, um, less than in the order of the hour. Okay, so some comparisons. So we have uh, the sargassum. Um, I put leeway because this is the leeway with the factor uh, leeway factor got from the theory. Not so it's not a guessing. So this is. A, a leeway in green, uh, the reduce uh, and the full in, in red and blue, and the real trajectory in black. So you can see for the sargassum, uh, the solution for the sargassum, the reduce and the full, they go uh, very close. Uh, this is for the board. So we have the three uh, uh, versions uh, also. Uh, much closer than the previous uh, model and the guessing leeway factors. And the solution for the um, sphere, uh, for the full, the reduce, and in green, the leeway kind uh, solution. And the same thing for, for the cube. So this is getting uh, really close. I will put some metrics in a minute. Before going there, I just want to uh, mention one more thing, that we include some error, and why we are including some errors. This is, uh, first of all, because <clears throat> we measure the buoyancy at Rasmus, right? At the density of the uh, Rasmus uh, seawater, right? And when you move to the Gulf Stream or to Florida current, it will be a, li a little different. 
And also, it will change again because the wind will move it to different waters, right? So it will be changing density. So it's not that I have just one value of delta, right? Delta was the density of the water divided by the density of a particle. So I check those numbers, and that may change less than 3%, not, almost nothing, right? So not, for very extreme values, they will change if I were considering all the salinity temperature possibles around will change to the 3%. I guess it's much less than that. But there was other factor because this is uh, styrofoam and we start noticing also that that's why also I, I think taking just a week was a good idea because star, even though we put, uh, the engineers did uh, several uh, hands of, you don't say hands, right? They painted, so they were not supposed to be absorbing the styrofoam, a lot of water, but end up being absorbing. So there is a change in the buoyancy because of the water is getting on our drifter, right? So I did put a 10% uh, change uh, in, the, in, the, in the buoyancy uh, to see the changes, and you can see in the shaded uh, uh, around the main, the, the main solution that uh, is um, is around the the, the real uh, drifter, which is the the complete um, uh, line. Okay, so some metrics. I use the same. I used a couple of different metrics. This is the one, the same metric that um, Nick presented the other day. So basically, uh, the distance between. Uh, the real drifter and the model drifter, and it's divided by the length of the how far the drifter is is going. But and you you can see here the the the, the solution for the model, and you have the other solutions in different lines. For example, let's say um, for the cube. In this case, it looks like the for this metric the. 5% looks a little better, but if you look the numbers, and in this case, maybe the 1% looks a little better than the, the one uh, with, but all the numbers were between 85% and 95, right? But if you want to consider the whole range of delta, you can see that even though this may be better for this, it's, it's much worse for the other delta, right? So uh, consistent in all the range, this ends up being better. But I didn't like the fact that this is really, none of them is bad, right? I would say that 0.7, I would say is good, right? So I, I, and the comparison in trajectories didn't look that good. So I didn't, I was not very comfortable with this uh, skill uh, uh, metric. So I did other testings, and this is the, oh, I forgot the name, ha, with H, Hardorf distance, which is it's finding the closest uh, curve. And it's actually, I like the idea that having a solution in um, kilometers. So if you are looking for somebody, you want to know if um, the prediction is around 10 kilometers, 50 kilometers, or 100 kilometers, right? On the other scale, we don't have such a measure, right? So in this case, uh, uh, the solution for maxi relay set is below the 10 kilometers. All the other are around 10, 20s, and the ones that were just guessing numbers that do not change with the buoyancy gets better value for some of the cases, but much worse value for some others, right? So there is no consistency uh, between the uh, all the, the buoyancies. Um, just, uh, the first one I did is actually the mean distance, just the normal distance in all the time. So for, for the, in red for the model, it is less than, it is around 20, but with the standard deviation, you can be around here or of course below here. I didn't put all the curves because the, the figure looks horrible, but you can see that all of the others are uh, getting uh, much uh, farther in kilometers than the, the real uh, uh, drifter. Okay, um, so I shouldn't say just preliminary, uh, but anyway, because this is already uh, almost finished, but there are some experiments that we didn't analyze, but. Uh, 
the experimental suggesting that the inertial effects are important, and as we, we saw, the dependency in delta looks like is the most important factor in, in, in the results. So I would say that mainly the, the buoyancy, uh, but all for sure, right? Uh, so the results are really uh, consistent with uh, the model of 2016. I say noticeable improvement with respect to the 2016 um, a, a model. Of course, all this will depend how well we know the velocity and how well we know the, the wind, right? So there are other errors to consider. So that's why uh, this first comparison was done in the Gulf Stream that we expect to know it a little better. Uh, but as Javier mentioned at the, at the end of, her, of his talk, we are uh, planning a more uh, control experiments in the wave tank. And as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, uh, we are planning more field experiments that hopefully they will be um, uh, more control in the sense that uh, we will, as I said, more spheres, different buoyancy in that, in, uh, in that sense. And I think that's all. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I did. Yes. And actually, I thought I, 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 at one point, I did have a slide about that. So we didn't include any of the waves, and I think Javier mentioned that. So the hope is that partially that is included on the, on, on the current, the stock drift, right? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you if you if you have the response of in the in the in the water model, you will have the response of the waves. But um, but yeah, for this particular, we are just considering a flat uh, interface. But yeah, you are you're right. Yeah. So some in some cases, people are suggesting that you can include the stock drift as as one percent of the wind. To, to the current, right? But yeah, I didn't include it. So yeah, so I don't know. That maybe that's something also that could be, not maybe it's something that could be tested as well in the in the tank, I guess. Yeah. So the lab experiment will give us a, a lot of insight on that. And so as I said, the limitation of the current is a, is is something, right? Yes. Oh, sorry. That, so the, uh, for the case of the, uh, of the North Atlantic, uh, I didn't, I, we are starting to analyze them. They, they look good, uh, but I don't have the whole results done. So uh, in the case of Puerto Rico, uh, we are, uh, Nathan is analyzing that. And the first, the main limitation that he's uh, having is that, um, the current that he's using, because we are in a very coastal area, he's using HICOM, so I think that will be a, an issue because we don't have a observation of currents and wind there, right? So, but yeah, it's, it's hopefully soon. <laughs> yes? Yeah. To the drifters? Yeah. No, 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 no. So they, they uh, we deploy them together, but they, they, yeah, they they do not. I mean, but when you have several of the same kind, they do not interact, but they behave similarly, as I show at the begin show uh, at the beginning with this matrix, right? But, yeah, what? In some cases, we showed that they travel together, and in some other cases, they do actually strike or... Well, because they were a different kind. <laughs> they have different buoyancy, so they have different law. They, they behave different, right? I just want to go to this. Yeah. yeah. But that is a specific of the inertia. 
Yeah, so because they, uh, they change buoyancy uh, along the axis, right? So they are different kind, yeah. Yeah. So what what will be a better word? No, no, no. <laughs> in your case, there are lots of forces. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, so, because it has a, a mass. It has a mass, but the, because of a mass. The, yeah, it's, it's mainly because, yeah, exactly, because it has mass. Right? Yeah, maybe, yeah. That they call it because of the mass, like, uh, yeah. Finite size, yeah. Yeah, so that do not follow the, f the fluid, yeah. So, but, yeah. So I, so I have, yeah. Oh, well, I actually didn't look at any of these um, specifically. What was the the current? What was the wind? I, so no. So I was I put just this to show that they were organized by by type. But I, yeah, we didn't analyze yet the yeah yeah yeah. And I, I, analyzing this will be more rich in the sense that there will be much more differences in the velocity field and wind in each of the cases, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the wind died for a while or something, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so actually, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I was actually, I, I told him when he finished that uh, maybe a, a, a one way would be like in, in, in the case that we are doing, like the alpha coefficient is more or less I would say, well, justify and everything, but to get the tau, we, have, we did a fit, right? Even though we, we did consider se several things, we end up saying the uh, tau, uh, the, sorry, k, that k, I mean, I should put the, goes with delta to the minus r, right? And the r was, we, we found it by a fit. So that could be a good way to find uh, parameters, right? more than, so, and that will be much more useful in the sense that once you know the parameter, you have the law to, for several other uh, conditions in the terms. So use the machine learning to get parameters. Mm -hmm. Especially with the, the future ball experiment that you were talking about, that's mm -hmm. a really good way to constrain and compare. So I, Yeah. Yeah, it's optimization. Actually, actually, what we were doing here, yeah. But yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. To get parameters, not that you. But it's a fit, best fit. Yeah, yeah, but you, you, 
you are getting this by optimization, less, less square, right? But what he's asking is that if they could be used in some way, the machine learning. That's, that's the question. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what that's what uh, that's why initially we thinking on that we initially plan to have several like this experiment, right? Several of the same kind. But we did the first one just going in a boat from Rasmus because we want to test the equipment and end up having some interesting results that we started analyzing, right? So I, I, I and given the, um, so I, I wouldn't call this the variability of the, of the current because you can see how they, they group by, by difference, buoyancy, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the lead. The, these were drifters, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, this, this leeway is not that I am proposing. I mean, it's something that people were using for a while, trying, that's why I said like leeway kind, right? So, but the, the nice thing is this is, get, you get this uh, shape, leeway shape, like current plus coefficient plus wind, just from the integration of the drag force, right? So you, you can get the, the, the shape of that, right? The, the form of the leeway, but yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, 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 many people are working already and we are actually starting, people in the group, the, the NOAA people are already working with the South Florida University. They, they have this satellite algorithm, right? So they, they do follow the sargassum mat density, right? So, but, but in that case, I mean, it's, you cannot really identify other things, right? So that's why we are also working with some GPS and some, the first experiment with real sargassum was in Puerto Rico, but we, we plan to do others. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a very good thing, but when end up being too much in the beach, it's not that good. <laughs> Because, I mean, all the health problems, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. They, 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 they go like little mats that go together. But yeah, they are attached each other. But uh, some of them are part of the same plant, some of them not, right? So, but um, yeah, so Javier presented some ideas. He's working 
uh, that he has the connection between the, yeah, so the tension between that, what is he, he adding to this uh, uh, problem.